Okay, Chris, if you're ready to start, action! Ow! We've uprooted our lab and brought it somewhere entirely new. New to you, anyway. This is Dr Zahn's kitchen, so you know what that means. I certainly do, Chris. It does not mean eating in the lab, Zahn. But Chris, today's... A rule is a rule. And not oh, eating in the lab is the number one rule. Zahn, is... if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. But, Chris, there is absolutely no way I'm going to let you eat in the lab. Look, Chris, today's experiment is all about taste. Oh, why didn't you say so? I did! We've rigged my kitchen with every gadget you can think of. We're going to get up, close and personal! I am literally calling the shots. Look at this. Oi. Action! Today's experiment, as I said before, is all about taste. And so far, I've tried cheese, crackers, grapes, and some delicious chocolate. No, that's not an experiment. That's just you eating stuff. OK. Now, to start to understand taste, we need to have a really good look at a tongue. So, Zan, let's have a look at yours. Let me grab my 360 camera. Now, the longest tongue of any known human is from the lips to the tip 10 centimetres long. So, Zand, let's see how long yours is. You've got your ruler there. Stick it out. How long's that? About 20 centimetres. That's not true, Zand. Do it again. Stick your tongue out as far as you can. That's just 5 centimetres, Zand. Now, the tongue is really a big bag of muscles. There are four muscles that attach the tongue to bones, and they have great names, like genioglossus, styloglossus, Palatoglossus and pyoglossus, named after the bones that they are attached to. And they all end in glossus, which probably means something to do with the tongue in Greek or Latin. It means tongue. Tongue? In which language? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. There are another four muscles inside the tongue that aren't attached to any bones at all, which makes them very, very unusual muscles. They're just attached to each other. They are what makes your tongue so mobile, it can make all these different shapes. It helps you swallow, it helps you chew, it helps you speak, and it helps you whistle. Do some tongue movements for a son. Curl it up. It's good. And curl it down. OK, Zand, I've got a little clip lens for your phone camera so we can get a really good look at the surface of your tongue. Oh, well, that does sound good, Chris, but in fact, I think to really get a good look at my tongue, we need some help from Endwina. Do you mean Edwina? No, Chris, I mean Endwina, the endoscope. <laughs> well, I must say, Zand, this is very impressive. Is that an OTVS 300? It certainly is, Chris. The Viscera Elite 2 series. There we go, Chris. Edwina is fully operational. So this is an endoscope. Now, in this tube are optic fibres, and they can carry the image down to a camera that's in this box. And that allows us to look into all kinds of holes in the body. I can put it up my nose, I can put it in my ears. And in this case, we want to have a good look at my tongue. From the tip to the base. We're both trained doctors. You should never put cameras or anything other than food and drink down your throat. Now, the first thing you'll see if you look at Zahn's tongue or if you look at your own tongue in the mirror is it's really rough. And that's because it's covered in bumps called papillae. Now, you have four different types of papillae on your tongue. If you look at the tip, you'll find fungiform papillae, which contain taste buds and temperature receptors. You'll also find filiform papillae, which give your tongue its rough surface to help move the food around. On the sides of your tongue, you'll find foliate papillae, which help you chew and talk. Finally, at the back, it's the big circumvallex papillae, and they house several thousand taste buds. You can also see Zahn's uvula dangling at the back of his mouth, and this may help with swallowing and speech. Now a little further, at the back of the tongue, you can see the epiglottis. This is a flap which closes when you swallow to prevent food from entering the windpipe and then the lungs. Excellent tongue, Cam. Thanks, Endwina. No problem, Zan. So, Zan, did you know that on the surface of an adult tongue, there are about 5,000 taste buds? Yes, I did. And I can show you. Did 
did you know, for example, that the record for the longest tongue relative to body size is held by the tube-lipped nectar bat? Yeah, hi, yeah. No, I didn't think you'd know that. Or did you know, for example, that the world record for the largest tongue is held by the blue whale, weighing in at over three tons? Yeah, hi, yeah. No, I didn't think you'd know that either. And did you know that the taste buds on the surface of the human tongue can detect just five kinds of taste? Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't know that one. And did you know that those five kinds of tastes are salt, sweet, sour, bitter, and a fifth taste called umami? Yes, yes, I did know that, Chris. I knew all those facts. Mm -hmm. oh, you should have said. What's umami then? It's the sort of meaty rich flavour that you get in cheese and mushrooms. But don't give your tongue all the credit for your amazing ability to taste. There's another organ involved as well. It's quiz time. Is that organ that helps you taste A, your eyes, B, your nose, or C, your teeth? Well, the answer is B, your nose. That's right. And we're going to prove it using today's Do Try This At Home experiment. Ooh. For well, this experiment, you are going to need one volunteer. I volunteer Zand. You're going to need a blindfold. I have one right here, Zand. Put that on. Oh, perfect. My favourite colour. And it's got my name and everything. You'll need a clothes peg. There you go. Now, if you're going to block your nose with a clothes peg, it's important that you don't use the pinchy end, because that can hurt. So, in fact, you use the other end and just jam it over your nostrils, and that will work perfectly well, and it won't hurt. Or you can just pinch the end of your nose with your fingers like that. And lastly, Zan, put your blindfold down and put your fingers in your ears. You need a plate of different kinds of food. And remember to check if they have any allergies. So, Zan? Yes, Chris? Take your fingers out of your ears. Oh, sorry, that's better. Now, I'm going to give you uh, a cocktail stick with a little piece of food on it, and I want you to have a little nibble and see if you can figure out what it is. Hold out your hand. Turn toward me. There you go. There you go. Now, have a little bite. See if you can figure out what it is. To be honest, Chris, I don't know. All I can tell is that it's a bit salty. Do you want to make any further guesses? Have a little nibble, see if you can work out from the texture. That's the other thing that your tongue and mouth do, is they figure out the texture of foods. Are they crunchy? Are they soft? Are they smooth? It's a bit soft and crumbly, like cheese. Is it cheese? It is, in fact, cheese. Well done, Zan. Does it taste a lot like cheese? No, it just tastes a bit salty. Zan, there's a plate to put the food on. There you go, there's a plate. Put that in front of you. Next up. Here you go, put the hand out. Remember, garlic is one of the strongest tastes you can get. I mean, who eats it raw? What do you think? Can't taste anything at all. It doesn't taste of anything. Is it a piece of potato, or turnip, or um, a bit of egg? A bit of egg? Well, it doesn't taste of anything. It just feels sort of firm and smooth and wet. It could be egg. Can you put it further back in your mouth or have a little tiny bite, chew it around? To be honest, Chris, I have no idea. I think it's a piece of egg or a piece of potato. Well, that is completely wrong. It's a piece of garlic. What? Oh, uh, yeah. That's amazing. Oh. Oh, it's very garlicky now. As soon as the peg comes off, it's extremely garlicky, I suppose, because it's a piece of garlic. But with the peg on, it, it could have been a piece of potato. That's really? amazing. OK. We've now got a little... I'm keen to experiment further, Chris. Here you go, hold your hand out. Challenge my sense of taste. OK. Uh, is it a bit of pineapple? No. Is it sweet? What, what are the flavours you're getting? It's a little bit sweet. I'm getting sweet, but that's it. Is it a piece of bread? <laughs> no, it's a donut. Oh, but I love donuts. I would have thought I'd definitely recognise a donut. Ah, my favourite! Multicoloured sprinkles! Chris, your peg and blindfold have ruined donuts! What? This is a disaster! All right, now, put, put, hold on, now, come back, put your peg and blindfold on again. We've got one more thing. OK. Finally, Zan, I've got a spoon with some sauce on it. Ooh, I love sauce. Here we go. 
Okay, that's the end of the spoon. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Chris, what have you done? This is a very spicy sauce. I think it's a hot sauce, Chris. Is it a chilli sauce? No, it's mustard. Ah! Hang on a minute. Too much. Uh, yeah, but it only had the mustard effect up my nose. I quite like mustard. And all that was doing was making me tingle my tongue until I took the peg off and then it went up my nose. And now I'm getting the full mustard effect. And now it seems like your head is going to explode. Ah! Well, that was a very impressive demonstration, Chris. Without being able to use my nose, I couldn't really tell what any of that was. And I certainly couldn't enjoy the flavour. Around 70% of taste is actually smell. When you chew, the chemicals in your food travel up the back of your mouth into your nose and touch olfactory nerves, which send signals to your brain telling you what that food tastes of. Try and see what you can do. But humans don't have a brilliant sense of smell. There are other animals with much better senses of smell, especially dogs. So if you have a look here, this is a dog skull. And if you look up the nose, you can see all those fine, fine bits of bone in there. Those are the dog's turbinates. And they carry air in the dog's nose and up to the very back where the dogs smell nerves, the olfactory nerves are. And that's where dogs have many, many times more smell nerves than humans do. Well, I must say, dogs' noses are amazing. <clears throat> Chris, my dog's got no nose. How does it smell? Terrible. Thanks, Mr Grumbles. Anyway, since your experiment seems to have ruined donuts, I'm going to go and chew on this raw bulb of garlic.